So in this video we're going to go over the swimming program within System 6. Uh, this first part of this we're actually going to do a little brief overview of the keyboard and also of the main screen within swimming just to kind of familiarize yourself with all that's there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load up swimming and wait here for a second while it boots up notice on the boot screen it actually shows the uh, what the version number of the software is also up here at the top it shows what the software version is uh, 1.224-k3 the dash k3 again relates to the fact that this is a USB upgraded timer and the uh, firmware version which is currently at 1.44 also note we've got the date and the time up there at the top in the upper left hand corner we're showing it's in a reset mode uh, anytime the timer is actually running, uh, re uh, recording a race, we'll actually have a running time up in the corner there. Let me go ahead and reset the timer. We're back to reset mode. Down the left hand side of the screen here we show the lane numbers. Currently I'm configured for eight lanes. In the video for the setups we'll actually go through on how to change all that depending on the number of lanes you have in the pool. Uh, we've, also, we've also got the places slash lengths uh, column here. So as the laps tick off, they will this will this column will get updated, and then at the finish you'll actually uh, and and the splits you'll actually have the time show up here for each of the splits and or the finish. Backup time will be uh, shown at the finish as well, and then you'll also have asterisks show up under A, B, and C uh, for backup buttons as those come in. Uh, the R J stands for reaction. Or, or relay judging, excuse me, and that is those that will be populated with times for start reaction if you have it set up to do so, and uh, relay exchanges as well. Now that's only if you have the relay judging platforms um, in your hardware out on the pool. Down below here, you'll see we've got a title box for event and heat. Currently, I'm at event one, heat one, uh, boys 200 medley relay. Now this is title shows up based on what event sequence I have loaded and in the setups video we'll go through that as well as to how to um, denote which event sequence you want the timer to be running on. You'll have a race number down here as well and it tells you what race whether it's stored or not. Uh, this is will be updated obviously at the end of each race as the reset buttons are pushed it will update the um, file name or race number name. Also down here is the total lengths in that race. So as you can imagine, I've got a 200 medley relay going on and how many lengths that is, that's eight lengths. Down at the very bottom of the screen you'll, show, you'll see the eight lanes in the pool. Um, if I were to go along the keyboard and turn off lanes, those lanes disappear as in if there's no swimmer in those lanes. On the right hand side of the screen you'll see the number of uh, soft key options here. We've got the print option which allows us to go in and actually print a race summary for the current race, uh, split summary, relay summary, and then also has a form feed down here at the bottom. Uh, newer printers oftentimes will queue up print jobs. If they don't have a full page of data they won't print it out until you give it an actual form feed. Quick options in here is the next one whether or not you want to turn off on or off the far end by default you can leave that off that's not a big deal the timer will actually once we in the setups if we have it turned on it will by it will by default read that display lanes on or off all this does is turns off the main display whether or not you want to see the data coming in I think for the most part everybody leaves that on um, after the fact if you want to post the race by place on the scoreboard you can do that Remember, most of the time we run it um, by lane, and then at the end of the race you can also swap over and change to post it by place. Down at the very bottom here we have event heat um, mapped to what's our uh, scoreboard address of 0C, and the home guess is mapped to 0D. For those of you who only have one line, say for event heat, you can swap back and forth between event heat and home guessed on that scoreboard by just going into the quick options and doing that. I'll hit the quick button here, quit button here and we'll get out. The scoreboard button allows for 
Uh, the top one is for step data, and that is for like a single line scoreboard or, or less than the number of lanes in the pool. By clicking this, it'll literally st step through the data. Clear lanes. If I want to take the times out after the race is done, I can hit the clear lanes button, and it will clear those lanes out, the, the times out of the lanes. Scoreboard blank. Uh, this will actually blank the scoreboard by hitting it once. It goes to blank, and then by default, whatever is line three or zero three on the scoreboard will show the time of day based on the clock that's in the timer, the time that's set in the timer. If I hit it a second time, it goes to a total blank. Notice the update box shows me what that status of the scoreboard is. Turning it back on brings it back to its last state. So if there was uh, lanes one through eight and race or finish times for one through eight, that would be displayed back up there again. Team scores. This is where you would manually enter the team scores if you wanted to. Home, guest one, two, and three. And it's just a matter of simply clicking on which score you want to update and then using the uh, 10 key in the lower right hand side of, this, of the keyboard to enter the score and just hit enter when you're done. The record time, if you want to add in a record time, if you have a, a way to display that on, on the board, you can do so. You can enter that in there. Okay, quit here and we'll get out of the scoreboard options. We're going to hold off on setups because that'll be kind of its own set of videos because there's enough in there to go through more than once. Uh, stored data. This is where I would find previous races. Uh, if I had a number in this particular time, where I actually just did a clear out, I don't have, believe I have any more in here. Uh, if your timer's been turned off, you'll want to go back. You'll hit the more button actually twice to find the previous meet. When the timer's shut down, it stores a meet file, which includes all the races for that day, or at least to the last point it was shut down. So when you go back in, if you're trying to find, even if you've shut it down, you know, at noon or at the break time. Um, and then you go back in trying to find that stored data. Remember, you got to go back through here to find previous meet because it was saved. And actually, you can see I don't have anything saved in here. Um, I'll go back through here. If I did have data showing up in here, you would see the lane, place, times, all that stuff. The allows me to actually print the race. I can print it by race summary, split summary, relay summary. And there again, your form feed if it's not a full amount. So basic idea here is that you navigate till you find the race in particular that you want and print it out. Uh, you can also, in here, you can do scoreboard posts of the store data posted by lane or place, and these are for older races. Um, go back in here. I can print an entire meet if I wanted to and it would literally go through if I had uh, the, the meat actually stored data in here I would actually be able to print that meat out okay and then finally the miscellaneous button uh, if you're on a break um, the, the first option here power, power on or off if you get an extended break going on in the pool and you want to leave the timer on you can literally go in here and miscellaneous turn pad power off just saves wear and tear on the pads there's no reason to to put electricity out there if we don't need to uh, it saves uh, on corrosion and all sorts of fun stuff just to note at the start at a start signal anytime a start signal comes on regardless of what this is set to it will turn them back on there's a shutdown button which will actually kick us back out and shut us down or the normal routine if you follow the sticker on the on the upper right hand corner of your screen is to actually go through and change sport ask you whether yes or no I'm going to click no at this time and it'll take you back to sport loader the other thing in here is colors it allows me to go in and change background colors so I could change it to maroon change it back to this kind of a green or I could come back to the lime color aqua all sorts of choices if you are get around and you want to uh, make sure that you've, you've messed it up so much that you want to get back to the original colors that the system 6 came with you just hit the default key and it'll run it right back hit the save colors button and you're all set the other thing in here is this create new meet button the create new meet actually allows you to go through do your testing it'll store the races as you do your testing and so you'll have a number of races show up down here in the in the uh, stored column what you want to do at the end of that is come into the miscellaneous and do the create new meet 
choose yes and it'll bring your race numbers back to zero so that as you're starting off every your first event will line up with race number 001 on the timer so this kind of con this concludes the introductory overview we're actually going to do a short one on the keyboard as well and then we'll get into the actual setups of the system 6 timer all right so let's take a look at the keyboard layout uh, i've got the put this up on the screen here of the uh, key, uh, swimming insert for the keyboard. You'll notice um, common to all of the inserts on the far right hand side you've got the 10 key with the clear and enter in the bottom right hand side. The enter key here is the same functionality as the enter key to the right of the soft keys on the screen, uh, off to the right of the screen. Uh, kind of take it by block here. Well, let's go over on the first row at the very top you've got the lane numbers 1 through 12 and then right below that you've actually got the soft keys to turn these lanes on and off so if you have 12 lanes let's say and you've only got swimmers in lanes you know 2 through 11 you can turn off 1 and 12 with those um, those of you familiar with the system 5 uh, will probably quickly realize system 6 operates a little bit differently in that at the uh, as soon as the reset keys are hit at the end of each race the lanes turn themselves back on on the timer and system 5 actually would hold the uh, the state of the last race so if I had turns off turned off lanes 1 and 12 or 1 and 10 or whatever lanes I had turned off on the system 5 when I went to the next race those lanes stayed off as well so just a just a note for those uh, new to the system six, but coming from the system five. Below the lane on and off are all the finish arm buttons. So if we miss a touch or miss a split at some point, and we're coming down, the swimmers coming down for the finish, you can simply find the lane that they're in, hit the finish arm button, and it arms the pads for that lane. You will then capture obviously the. Uh, the finish time. Below that is a split arm. Same idea, just on a split. Down the bottom left hand corner is a manual start button. Keep in mind that if your start system for whatever reason you don't get the start signal through and you hit the manual start, that file is going to go across to meet manager with the asterisk on it that it was a manual start and not an automatic start. To the right of the start button you'll see the store print in red. Uh, this the sort of typical procedure obviously is as you may know already is that you race finishes you hit the store print button check the data on the screen make sure everything is is in good shape and then hit the two reset buttons over here for just to the left of the 10 key there is the sad uh, just to the right of store print you've got next heat next event and edit event heat now the edit event heat just allows you to jump ahead or backwards in the event sequence uh, if you get out of out of line, you know, if you get off onto the wrong, if you hit, let's say, next event too many times, and you want to go back, you hit edit event heat. Use the 10 key to tell it what event and what heat number you want to go to. Hit enter at the end of each of those, and you're done. It's back to there. To the right of the, uh, there's a column to the right of the lane numbers. Uh, there's an edit DQ and a plus and minus touch. If you have just one lane, for instance, the edit DQ, you can go through and actually an edit DQ a particular lane. It pops up and asks you which lane. Plus touch, minus touch does the same thing. Pops up and asks you which lane you want to add or subtract a touch from. And then you've got the keys over here uh, to the right, a little farther to the right in between that and the 10 key, which is just so 25, 50, 100, 200, 400, 500, 800, 1,000, and then more. These are quick keys uh, for immediately just changing the length of the race for whatever reason. Let's say your event sequence was, there was a mistake in the event sequence. Um, event 1, Heat 1 was not actually a 200. It was supposed to be a 100. You can quickly hit the 100 key, and it's going to save it. Um, it's, everything's going to be correct on the timer. Thank you.